Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about what discount rate to use for Palantir. If you've tried to calculate the weighted average cost of capital in the past for Palantir, you've probably run into the problem that Yahoo Finance and other sites don't report a beta for Palantir. The reason this is, is because Yahoo Finance and many other sites default to a five-year monthly beta, and Palantir has actually only been publicly traded for a little over a year, so calculating a five-year beta isn't possible. I've gone ahead and calculated three different betas for Palantir. If you want to learn how to do this yourself, I have a more in-depth video for Alibaba here with a link below. I've calculated a daily, weekly, and monthly, all starting since when the company first went public on September 30th, 2020. For our daily beta, this gives us 388 data points, which might actually be a bit too many. Our weekly gives us 81 data points, which is probably about the right amount, and our monthly gives us only 19 data points, which is probably too few. Normally, you're gonna use 60 data points when calculating a five-year monthly beta, one data point per month for five years. So the weekly is probably the best scenario for us to use. Something to note before we jump into the file is that with only about one and a half years of data, we haven't been through too many market cycles to see how Palantir truly reacts compared to the broader market, but that's why having five years is usually a really good kind of timestamp as it helps wash out kind of the one-off events that could skew a beta like a COVID pullback or something of that nature. So now let's hop into the file and see what wax we've calculated. The daily WAC we calculated comes out to 10.2% with a beta of 1.43. The weekly WAC came out to 12.7% with a beta of 1.9. And the monthly WAC came out to 33.8 with a beta of 5.98. The real risk probably sits somewhere around 12.7%. There's a significant amount of risk around future revenues on both the commercial and renewal of government contracts, and along with the out of control stock-based compensation. But let's go ahead and take this WAC and drop it into our latest DCF and see what valuations we get. We'll get a 13 to $15 billion valuation if we include stock-based compensation, and about 16 to 18 billion if we exclude stock-based compensation. If we compare that to the current market cap of 25 billion, you can see they're actually pretty overvalued compared to my latest DCF model. I'll post a link below and it's here as well if you want to watch that. So, you know, I think taking the current WAC and applying it to Palantir does show that there's definitely some risk. We're getting a much higher WAC than 10%, which is kind of my standard default. But, you know, at the same time, there's not a ton of data points to really go off of. So. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And always, please like and subscribe. Thanks so much for tuning in.